Hey what's up guys, uh, the final part for the anti-cheat tutorial. In this video I'll be going over two checks instead of one. So we're doing a aiming check, which is mostly used for kill aura. Sometimes clients um, don't actually aim at the player perfectly, so you can detect that. Um, and then it, it's not very accurate, but it does. it's nice to have. And there's a velocity check, and I'm saving that for last because it's the worst check out of all of them, but it's still nice to have. But yeah, without further ado, we're going to go over that, and then I'll go over some optimizations and some suggestions or comments that people posted. But yeah, let's get started. You technically don't need the last two tutorials to follow this one, but I would recommend it, because otherwise you might have no clue what's going on. But anyways, let's get started. So, real quick before we get into the code. So the first check we're going to go over is the raid casting or um, anti-cheat aiming check, whatever you want to call it. And as you can probably see from the name, it requires ray casting. So I have a full video on ray casting. So you are going to have to go watch that and come back to this. The main reason you're going to need to go watch that and then come back is because you need um, a bunch of trigonometry functions. So you need a uh, root or squirt. Uh, <laughs> we need sin functions, both sin one and sin two, as well as cosine one and two. And then you will need a los and a ray cast function. So yeah, you need a bunch, but they are all included in the ray cast tutorial. I'm not going to go over it here. So go watch that video, apply this to your house and then come back here. I know probably not, probably kind of annoying, but it's, if you just watch it quick, it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, to add on to this, you'll need a ray cast miss function. That's not included in the tutorial. So make sure you create one. I'm going to show you what to do in that. So raycast miss, this is the code that will run when you miss a raycast. So when you hit a player, it shoots at a cast. And if you hit a player, nothing will happen. Otherwise, if you miss, that means it's most likely that you might be cheating. But first, let's go into the damage event and see what got added here. So this stuff down here is for the velocity check. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But what's new here is this right here. So in the first conditional in the damage event where we check, uh, we check. So we, the player gets thorned, takes thorn damage, which is the attacker. As you can see here, we calculate stuff for reach, but here's the important part. We're adding a global stat for the raycast underscore radius, which is included in the tutorial. I'd recommend two. However, if you want more exact values, you can set this to one for the range. Seven is actually a little bit high. You could probably get away with lower range but i'm just going to keep it on seven and the raycast id i'm setting to one and the uh id for one is what i'm going to use for uh the uh check or the specific raycast we're shooting out if you watch the tutorial video you can see that there, i use multiple different ids for different guns so i'm classifying the id one as the uh, anti-cheat check raycast whatever you want to call it and then we trigger the function raycast so now going to the raycast miss function. Now this will be triggered when the player shoots out a raycast and it doesn't hit a player. And I'll show you where to add, uh, where you trigger this function in a minute. I just want to show you the code. So first we're going to check if the raycast ID is equal to one, which if it is and they missed, let's increase the uh, AC, the kill aura violations. So kill aura violations. If you remember from the last tutorial or the first tutorial, I think we go over violations. And then here we check as long as the raycast ID is still one and the violations is greater than two. Then we'll set the stuff from the last tutorial. So the anti-cheat uh, check ID, the player ID, X, Y, Z, ping of the player, and then their violations. And then we'll trigger alert. And then alert here, we just check if the ID is three. Okay, first we check if they have alerts enabled. We check if the ID is three, and then we see if they were aiming, or we tell them, the staff members, they weren't aiming correctly as long as the, as well as the information there. Okay, and where do we actually add this? So we want to go to our functions in game. We want to go to raycast. Here it is. Go into the last conditional before the change global stat. And then in the else actions, originally there would just be an exit here. We want to add the trigger function. So go in here, add a trigger function, and then move it before the uh, exit. And then the function uh, we're triggering is raycast missed. But so now if we were to hit the player, um, oh yes. So raycasting by default will have these annoying pop-ups to like, for debugging and stuff. If you want to get rid of those, go to raycast, go into the last conditional, and then go into the if, and then just remove these here. So the play sound and the uh, display title. And then for the um, victim, they also have stuff displayed to them. So go into los, and then remove the play sound and the, the title here. So now it'll be normal. Nothing interesting will actually happen. Um, ignore that. That is for the velocity check. But if we hit them, nothing's going to happen because we're aiming directly at them. Now an anti-cheat might also ignore that um, an anti-cheat or a, a kill aura might like quickly go on the player and hit them and move back. So the idea is they're trying to catch that, which sometimes the raycast does. Sometimes it doesn't. It's not always accurate, 
and obviously I can't really test it. I'm not going to get on Hypixel with hacks, but if I can find it back when the housing hub PVP house was open, we did actually find a cheater using this check and it was very useful. I have no clue if I'm going to find the clip or not, but it did actually work very well. Okay. So the final check of the series is the velocity check. And this one is very simple. You don't need to go to any other tutorials. So in the damage event, scroll down or not, you know what I mean? But, um, there's all the velocity stuff here. So we're just adding on to the damage event. So first velocity, if you don't know, is a hack that lets you prevent taking knockback, which is useful in modes where you can like fall off like sumo or something. So an easy way to check that in housing is just when they get hit, check if they move at all. If they don't move at all, then that's probably velocity. So first we're going to check if the damage cause was the an entity attack. So they were hit by a player. I guess actually that doesn't need to be the case. You can use projectiles and stuff too, but I'm only just using entity attack for now. We're going to set stats velocity X, Y, and Z to the placeholders for X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, we're going to exit, which stops the rest of the code from running. So making sure that they won't, were hit by an entity or a player. And then we got, this is really important here. We pause for nine ticks. Now, I found nine ticks works pretty well. If you want more accurate, if people are getting false flagged, maybe increase this. This is mostly based off ping, but I found nine works pretty well. And then after those nine ticks, we're going to check if the x y and z are all e still equal to the x y and z uh, player coordinates which if they are that means that the player hasn't moved so let's increase our velocity violations by one otherwise we're going to exit so they haven't so they have moved so we're going to stop the rest of the code from running and then here you've probably seen this a hundred times now we check if the uh, the violations count is greater than um, i'm doing three you actually might want to increase this this is kind of low and then we ch uh, set the ID to four, which if we go to alert, four is for they didn't move when hit. It's just the velocity uh, alert. And then we set player ID, X, Y, Z, ping, violations, and alert for all players. Okay, so let's do slash alert. Oh, alert, sorry. Okay, I accidentally toggled it off. Let's toggle it back on. We're going to TP C3OZ, uh, my all over here. And we're going to start hitting him. And nothing should happen. We shouldn't get any alerts because every time we hit them, he's moving. Now, the way to actually test this and also note that this will false flag is if the player is in a small area where they really can't move. Let's TP C3OZ to this like one by one hole here. And now if we were to hit them, nothing will happen because the violations haven't gone up to the certain amount yet. But eventually, as you can see, it will flag. So they didn't move one hit because they have nowhere to go. So there's nothing really you can do about that. If you have an area with small areas where they can get stuck like this, maybe this isn't the best check to have in your house. But I figured I'd go over it because a few people did ask. Okay, and that's going to conclude this uh, tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed. I do want to go over some optimizations and go over some comments that people posted just to hopefully answer any questions. Cloven Bob commented that checking 250 players X, Y, and Z every few ticks is not a good idea for performance. He's refer this was commented on the first video where we go over the speed check. So yes, in the distance function where we do uh, check if the player moved and if they have, then do the speed check. We do have this trigger once every seven ticks for all players, which is about a little bit less than half a second. And that's true. If you trigger all this math so often for so many players, it won't help with the house. So I'd recommend if you do intend on having a lot of players, maybe increasing uh, the amount that or the how often it happens and then making sure the average distance or just increasing the average distance, because obviously if you increase how often it it uh, it triggers the math and stuff then the distance will be and the distance would normally be higher hopefully that makes sense that was a little confusing how i explained that but i don't really know how uh, better to explain that um here someone commented if it's better than uh watchdog no it's definitely not this is using housing actions it's not using a lot of the stuff that servers can see so servers can see a lot more information more precise information and obviously we don't have access to that in housing so we're just mostly getting the player's coordinates and doing math based on that so no, this will never live up to an actual Minecraft anti-cheat, but because Watchdog is so limited on housing, it's better than nothing. I know how to make a ban action. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm so good. I'll probably take off your anti-cheat. Nope, I think you're good. To sum up this comment, they basically say that in most cases, ha hacks have bypasses for this. And that is the true in the case of anti-cheats and true in the case of most of these checks. But what they're referring to is the speed or fly check which literally gets the position of where you are and finds the difference between two points. So I don't really think you can bypass that because you can't 
alter your position on the server. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure there's like some smaller ways you can do around it. They also said how when you use a fly hack on a hack client, it does not reset your parkour due to you flying. Because when you are flying and during parkour, it does reset your time. But what the hack is doing is it's like literally setting your position and moving you around. You're not Minecraft vanilla flying, which is why we checked the speed. I'm not doing this. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the series too. If you want more series like this in the future, I don't know what I would do it on, but it was definitely fun to do this. If in any tutorials, anything changes, any of the math could be done better, or I just have any suggestions to like just make anything better whatsoever, do read the pinned comment. But yeah, without other way, I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.